I'm a typical video girl. You're a typical video girl? Super typical. I know. You got 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. How would you... Uh, how would you describe a typical video girl? It's just a name. No, but what, what would be a typical video girl? A girl who likes to carry and associate herself with videos, cameras. Does it make her typical? She carries it around all the time. <laughs> hey guys, this is Sharpez. This is Juan. And you're watching Typical Video Girls, and we're here at Stereo Live in Dallas, which is a new venue with the one and only, all the way from Tel Aviv, Israel, for Gore. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. So you're from Israel. Do you Correct. speak Hebrew? Correct. 100%. 100%. Can you say something for us? better than I speak English. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, funnier and smarter in Hebrew. Okay. Can, do you mind saying something for us? Uh, what would you like me to say? Um, hey, guys. This is for Gore. Hey, Malek Zabogo. Very nice. Oh. Super cool. Okay. So when did you move down to the States? Um, about five, six years ago. Five, six years ago. Did you ever think that you would be where you're at ten years ago? Um, in my dreams, yes. In reality, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm still not like completely understanding where what's going on. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Still, like, it's still like, kind of weird. That's okay. Yeah. It's just a dream. You're going to wake up any minute now. What is life? Maybe life is just a dream. It might yes. be. Yeah. So what gave you that motivation to make your dream into a reality? Um, I mean, what do I have to lose to try and accomplish my dreams? True. So I wanted to ask you, so you do dubstep, you're in the EDM world now. You used to be in a death core band. Why did you decide to leave the death core industry and that scene? Before I was in death core, I was also in jazz and I'm still in jazz and I was in classical music and I'm still in classical music and I still fucking love death metal. I love music. I think that the only, um, the only thing that is very elastic with, uh, with uh, EDM and being a producer in general is the fact that I don't have to work with other people. I can sit in my studio. If I work, I work. If I don't work, I don't work. You know what I mean? So basically my career is all in my hands. I totally agree with you. So you now own a label called By Gore. Correct. What got you into, because most artists don't really do that. They stick to performing, performing or you know, maybe sometime acting. What got you into just starting your own label? Okay, so the thing is, uh, like let's say seven years ago, uh, major labels were still in the they were still in the prehistoric part like like world of record label and they just didn't believe in the internet the, the internet was like foreign to them and the thing is I have like millions of plays on the internet on the internet I'm headlining festivals but no label want to release my music because it doesn't fit their label so it's like you know fuck y'all I'm gonna open my own label and release my own shit and the concept of the label was we're gonna go out and look on the internet and find like other people that are popping that labels are just not aware of, you know? So what we did is we signed all these great artists and we actually pop, you know, we actually were successful with a lot of artists. Um, we just found them on the internet and we're like, yo, we, we were gonna help you and we helped them. Um, and you know what? And the thing is that the, the whole like concept of, of Bygor, of like going on the internet, and, like, finding this popping act right now this is like the the, the majors labels uh like like this is how, what they live for you know they go on soundcloud look for this like popping artists and sign them so we were before the time that's super cool i think you guys yeah. should start a blog as well um consisting of all the artists that you guys represent and just start posting music from then on yeah where they can go ahead and download their music. What do you think about that one? That's oh, kind of like, SoundCloud is like the music blog, I guess, or Spotify. Okay, I found you on SoundCloud two years ago. That's and like, then I started seeing you as something wonderful, and I loved it. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you so much, I always respect you. Yeah, I, I was like, it. I'm happy to meet you. I was like, yes, yeah, I finally get to meet Thank you, somebody that I like. I like. I mean, I also met Tara, Tara Vita. They're good, yeah. I love them too. They're sick. Yeah. They're good people. Uh, you did Forbes with g -Eazy. How was that? Um, honestly, you know, like, um, yeah, I worked with someone that I really appreciate. It was amazing. 
you know, to uh, to make a record that act, you know the record blew up too. To make a record that is successful with someone you love, it's like it's great. Yeah, it was a great song too. I don't know, all the good songs are great. Super cool. So, what is your definition of the worst performance ever? I think that uh, I always blame myself. I never blame anyone else. I mean, it's, it's of course, it's only stuff. you on stage. Yeah, but there's like. There's, There's like a lot of things that can go war wrong, you know? Or, and, you know, my job as a DJ to make everything work, no matter what. So, if I fuck up, I fuck up, I'm sorry. That's perfectly fine. I agree with you. You know what? I think the fact that I'm a human uh -huh. and that I make mistakes. It's normal. That's good. Right. You accept that. It's better than me showing up with like a bunch of like pre cued everything, like, uh, the recorded set and everything. You know, I'm, I'm a human. Sometimes I fuck up. I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> great. You're human. You're not a diva, obviously. No, and you can accept no, your mistakes. No, not really a diva. Not really a diva. You just want to get everything done. Want it to go smooth. Yeah. If something happens, it happens. I get you. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for hanging out. Appreciate it. It was great meeting you. This is my first time. Thank you. And I know your birthday is next month, so I wanted to wish oh, you yeah. an early, early birthday. birthday. Thank you. So until next time, this is Shrek Fest. This is Juan. the age that you don't want to oh. celebrate a birthday. You want to like, yo, it's not my birthday, actually. I'm still 28. We're, we're excited for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> until next time, I'm Shrek I'm Juan. The only reason I'm excited about my birthday is every time I have a birthday, something crazy happens. Like, wait, wait, like wait. insane. Like what? What was one thing? Sum it up in one word. I don't want to talk about this in an interview. <laughs> That's okay. All right, all right. No. We'll cut it off. It was radical enough for me to not talk about it. <laughs> okay. Until next time, it's TVG. Thanks. Bye.